hey, everybody tells me to just chill out. Chill out. Hey, Ben. Hey, Ben, you need to chill out. Chill out? Okay, I'll chill out. Good day, Semper Gumby Nation, and thank you for joining us on the Semper Gumby channel. Or oh, Semper, let's go over this way. Sem, that was Semper Gumby channel. Um, <laughs> I've been told plenty of times to just chill out, chill out. So today I am taking that comments pretty serious. So I'm gonna chill out. Now that I am not working in the workplace as a resource officer i am actually retired again and i this is this time it'll probably be uh for real i can't promise anything but i'm going to try it again this time so uh, i am no longer working and i decided to do this youtube thing full time so i can bring you all content but we are going to talk about how to stay cool in the back of this uh, camper or cap, the back of my rig truck uh, during the hot times of summer. Uh, we know that summer is coming along and uh, it's going to get hot, hot, whoo, hot. Not hot sauce, hot, but hot. Caliente, mucho caliente. Um, so we are going to build something that to keep us cool in the back of the truck. Now, before we start, I just want to let you know, this is, this isn't my idea. I did not come up with it. Um, I'm going to give, uh, props to the folks that I seen this on is, uh, I Dakota, um, on his YouTube channel where I first saw it. And then uh, a couple more other folks, I can't remember the name of him. And then Brian Waters just did one on his brand new F-150. In fact, when I go to Texas, uh, Brian and I are uh, going to do a video, uh, collaboration video, I guess you call it. And uh, at, over at Lake uh, Ray Roberts. And we got a beautiful campsite. Uh, we got our campsite right next to each other, right on the lake, overlooking. So we'll be doing some fishing, some drone flying, some cooking, and just kind of hanging out and uh, doing doing a video. Well, he'll be doing his video. I'll be doing my video. And we may just throw some footage in of our stuff uh, as a, a combo, like a combo pack, a happy meal. But uh, everyone knows that Texas in june july and august is sweltering hot we're talking maybe upper 90s um, even in the hundreds so for that i'm going to install a portable air conditioner in the back of my rig truck camper cat whatever you call it and uh, i'm going to show you how we do it so come on let's go take a look well, first things first, you know, you got to go get your, uh, your materials. And I got, went ahead and got me my plywood and measured the dimensions and went ahead and cut it. Right now, plywood prices have come down a little bit, so it's a perfect time to do it. And the hardest part of this build is fitting it into the back of the tailgate. Now, let's go check that one out. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but on the newer trucks, I would say maybe 2019 on up, they have a lot of things on the tailgate uh, bracket and on the uh, side of the lights. You have your, your latch pin, you got some rubber grommets, you got your uh, cable, and of course you got nuts and bolts. So you gotta take all of those into consideration when you're cutting your wood just to make it fit. And that is on both sides, as well as the 
channel between the tailgate and the bed. Now the first thing I did is I measured across from the widest point to the widest point on the uh, bed and I got 63 inches. So I know that uh, I'm gonna go with 63 and a half just to give it a little bit of play or a little bit of leeway in case I just uh, need to trim some stuff down and get a good fit. Now you won't have a perfect fit, you know, airtight fit, but that could be compensated with adding foam, uh, insulation, and uh, like I said, you, you won't be able to get a super tight fit, but a 5,000 BTU unit in the back of a, a truck cap is plenty. So I, I'm, not a, I'm not worried about losing some of the cold air because 5,000 BTU will be plenty. Now, the Dodge Rams, and I'm gonna speak for myself, um, the tailgate is fairly wide. You got about five inches. Uh, well, actually six and a half inches at the widest point. And the caps have this section right here that flushes with the tailgate, top of the tailgate. So I had to measure from the bottom of the hand, or So I had to measure the bottom of the tailgate to the top of the cap and I got 23 inches. So I'm gonna measure 63 and a half by 23 and cut out my piece of plywood. Now to save you time, I didn't measure it out and cut it for you because you know that's like a boring thing to see or do. But if you look closely, I have notched out some areas. Now, once I got the AC installed, you see it's a little bit of an angle. And so I built a little support platform to, to help with uh, the stability of it. And just, you know, nothing special. And that'll go up. Now, everything that looks good, we're gonna go ahead and probably stain the outside. Uh, just because it's going to be towards the elements and give it a little bit of clear coating on top of that to help protect it. But as far as the install, it's pretty much there. When I get to the uh, campsites, especially the one at Ray Roberts, they have electrical hookups. So what I'll do is I'll run an extension cord and run it to the power box that they have at the uh, each individual site. This AC unit can be powered by a power station such as a Jackery, Blue Eddy, um, or, or any lithium power generators, but just be aware, it probably won't last more than a couple hours because these things draw quite a bit of power. Just like that, I went from a hooded green sweatshirt to our new Semper Gumby t-shirt, our new colors. If you like the colors, Please uh, comment in the comment box below and let us know how you like them. Uh, we will be giving a couple of these away, so um, I'll explain what you need to do to try to win one of these. The AC unit that I'll be using is a Medea, 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 Medea um, room air conditioner. It's a 5000 BTU. It says for small rooms, and I guess this would be considered a small room. And it's in black. And I went with black because, you know, the, everyone's got white. And I just wanted, I didn't want something that's just stand out that you can see. I mean, you could tell there's an AC unit there, but it's black. So I picked this up at Walmart, 5,000 BTU. And they are on sale for $148. And this is the non-remote control because I'm in such a small space, I can just turn the uh, manual controls myself. Several of you have asked me why I went with the window unit versus a portable unit such as the Zero Breeze. Well, the main, the main concern for that was cost. The Zero Breeze is over $1,000, yet it's portable and it's only 16 pounds and it has a handle you can transport and move from vehicle to vehicle, tent to tent, 
but a $1,000 price tag versus $148 for the AC unit and $25 for the plywood uh, was a no-brainer. Also, the Zero Breeze, you have to run hoses out your vehicle. Uh, there's two hoses, and then you have to have a drain tube um, somewhere for it to drain. And it only has... Uh, so now that we got everything cut out, installed, test fitted, and ready to go, we're going to remove this, and I'll show you how to remove it. And we're going to go ahead and set it up for some uh, wood stain and some clear. So first thing you need to do is tilt the AC unit forward. Let it drop down. Remove the support brace. Go ahead and push it through. And to remove it, like I said, all you have to do is lift up and pull it out. So we got everything laid out. We're gonna go ahead and stain uh, using the Verithane wood stain. And this is gun stock. And I've used this for many a years now in the back of my, my all my C10s when I redid the wood beds. Um, it was stained using this gun stock. I just like it. It gives it a real outdoor kind of color. Um, just like on an old rifle, wooden rifle, lever action, it's got that wooden stock. This is it. One there, one there, one there, one there. Every word is dark at. So what do you think? Was this fun? <laughs> I appreciate your help. I wouldn't have been able to done it without you. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Ray just came at the end, huh? It looked like it looked like he was here all day, but he went to the dentist. And of course, we had all the help get, today. I don't get full pay then, do I? No, actually, you got to work. You got to have four hours before you can get part time. But uh, that was going to be drilled at an angle. Thanks to Steve, he helped me put this in. Ray. With the magic of video, first coat is done. PSA, always have protection. To the left, to the left. <coughs> All right, folks, I just finished the outside of the false tailgate panel, and I put about three coats of clear on it. And it came out pretty good with the gun stock uh, stain. The reason why I cleared it is because it's gonna be out in the elements and if it rains and gets wet, you know, this will help with the, uh, the environment uh, weather conditions. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put carpet on the backside so when it's in the truck, it gives it a little bit more homey feel and it matches the rest of the, the truck. So let's go install the carpet on the back side. Now when applying carpet to any kind of wood, metal, or cardboard, you wanna have a good spray adhesive. And I use the 3M77 Super Adhesive, which you can pick up at any local hardware store or home improvement centers. And this is fast drying. It's about $8 a can, and one can is uh, fairly enough to do a decent job, but this is a very sticky adhesive, so be sure you wear gloves. The carpet we will be putting on the backside is this speaker box carpet, and I picked this up on eBay, or I'm sorry, excuse me, Amazon, and they have a variety of colors. The home improvement centers do offer carpet, but they're a little bit thicker than the ones I want to use. I want a little thin one on this backside. I'm not doing any kind of insulation, so this is just for aesthetics. So the inside of the cap um, doesn't look plain. And I'm able to put patches or um, Velcro to the backside of this. 
And you want to have a good roller to roll out the carpet after spraying the adhesive on it. And I've had this one for I don't know how many years. To, but a good roller to get that carpet flushed and stick, stuck to the uh, adhesive. So let's go ahead and put this carpet on. A key factor when cutting carpet is make sure you have a couple of razor blades. You want it sharp. You don't want a dull razor blade when you're cutting carpet because it'll fray. So folks, through the magic of video, got this done in like two minutes, but <laughs> This is what it looks like. Uh, this will be the inside of the truck cap. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna seal up this top half here using some uh, foam insulation, pipe insulation to be exact. And let's go put that bad boy on. Now when I close the tail or the uh, top glass, it actually pushes this in a little bit and gives it a good seal. Well, we're here in the back of the truck and there it is. Whoop, there it is. But all carpeted, cleared on the backside. AC's in. I still need to put a piece of weather stripping on the top there to uh, fill in that gap. I do have some gaps at the ends, but you know what? I might just stuff it with some rags because that's a hard gap to fill the way everything's curved out. I couldn't get it cut that quite straight and to make it fit. So I can live with that, but we can put stuff a little bit of rags or something in there, but Check it out. Just go ahead and comment what you guys think. And then I believe that it's gonna be very chilly back here. I must say, I did it the other day and it is cold back here. I might have to leave it on low or I might have to crack this window open over here to let some of the, if it's too cold in the low mode. But we're getting there and it's becoming more and more like home. It's been a week since I've been retired and I've been fairly busy. And it's been great because it allows me to do the things I really, really enjoy. You know, I don't worry about getting up, you know, at 4.30 in the morning, worry about going to bed at 8.30 at night or nine o'clock at night. You have no really, set schedule unless you have stuff like this planned and you just get up in the morning make yourself a cup of coffee and leisurely make your way out to the garage or to the lake or to the campground and we're looking forward to that because once this crappy weather breaks we're, we're going to hit the the campgrounds today it's rainy it's about 48 degrees yesterday it was 80 degrees so we're in the garage finishing this up and that was a fun build, so I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, our next video is gonna be installing the trailer hitch, the spare tire carrier by Wilco, and the spare tire and wheel itself. Because when you go off road or go on these trips and you got oversized tires, like 35 inch tires or larger, you need a spare tire because anything could happen. So, 
Always treat your neighbors well, look after them, spend time with your family, tell them that you love them because you'll never know how long you got left at, on this earth with them. And most of all, no matter what life throws at you, be Semper Gumby.